I'm Aaron Graber with Ventrac, and today we're going to mow a retention basin with a tractor and our tough cut. The purpose of a retention basin, or sometimes referred to as a retention pond, is to collect rainwater and runoff from anywhere where there's been a construction site. So typically around commercial buildings especially, all of those properties that build parking lots or anything where the rainwater would run off uh, and overwhelm the sewer system, there has to be a retention basin to collect that water and slow that flow down. This particular site is a great example of a site that presents all the challenges you might face when taking care of one of these areas. There's a tree line to the south of this site immediately, and that keeps the sun from hitting the basin all the time. So right now, even though this basin is dry some parts of the year, we've been in a pretty rainy spell and it's not getting any direct sunlight. There's about four to five inches of water in the bottom and it's very mucky. Also, just like any other water management basin, it has very steep sides and like this one, most of them will have a fence around so it adds that obstacle to work around as well. We get a lot of comments and questions asking about why we would even bother taking care of areas like this, uh, and even some suggesting that mowing these areas causes ruts and causes problems with the management of these areas themselves. Um, and what a lot of people don't understand is that you have to mow these areas regularly uh, for two reasons. One, it's often regulatory, so whether it's a municipal ordinance or uh, it's the local site owner that, that wants to maintain things, uh, it's often mandated. And two, it's just good general practice to mow these areas down so that you don't have problems with plants growing up and developing root structures. Over here, you can see a sapling. Pull it out of the ground here. So this is the start of a little maple tree, and this may be a year old only. If you didn't maintain this area at all and you just let it grow, uh, it wouldn't take more than a couple years for this to be a proper sapling and then a bigger tree later. And eventually what would happen is it would develop a root structure at the base that's that's heavy enough and robust enough that it would displace the ground and cause rain ruts and ultimately lead to erosion and lack of actual basin around this area. So the best way to stop that and keep that from happening over time is to regularly maintain these areas. Typically it's once or twice a year depending on how fast it grows and that keeps things like trees and other invasive plants from establishing and causing infrastructural problems later on down the road. The Ventrac is a perfect tool for this job because it handles steep areas well, it handles wet areas well, and it's highly maneuverable. You'll see all of those things coming into play as I mow this area. The approach today is to mow down all of the sides and then get as close to the middle as I possibly can. We'll try and mow as much of the bottom as possible. There might be some areas we can't get into because it's a little bit too wet, and those will have to be hand work. The exact property we're on today is maintained mostly with a zero turn on all of the regular grass areas. There's a couple open fields, there's some sports complexes, uh, but obviously a zero turn is not going to work to mow these areas. You're going to have to use only hand labor if that's the equipment you have available to you. So in a case like this, if you're a contractor that doesn't have the right equipment, you're going to have to have this subbed out to a different contractor. Some of these spaces are in public areas and the municipality will take care of them, um, but oftentimes when it falls on the contractor, they are using just that, hand labor. I mentioned maneuverability at the beginning of this, and that comes into play as well. Since we're an out front mower, you have control of the deck much easier than you do with most other machines. So if you're trying to get in here with a, with a rear mounted three point tractor or something like that, first of all, it wouldn't be stable enough, but second of all, difficulty in moving around things would make it almost impossible to do a job, especially like this one where it's a fairly tight area. This isn't a huge area, this isn't a huge retention basin. Uh, so having that maneuverability makes a lot of sense. Also, in every one of these areas, there's gonna be some amount of drainage equipment, inlets, outlets, various pipes and things. Working around all that stuff is much, much easier when you have an attachment on the front of the machine and you have easier visibility of it, easier control of it. If we were gonna do this property with a string trimmer, it would probably take me alone three to four hours. Uh, typically, you'd probably see two or three guys on the project at once and they might get it done in a couple hours and go on to the next one, but that's a lot of man hours.
The bottom line is if you own a property that has a retention basin or a detention basin, or if you're managing a property that does, you wanna make sure the right equipment is on that area so that you can actually use it long-term for what it's intended for. And if you're a contractor that's on the other side of that equation actually doing this work, then using something like the Ventrac is gonna be imperative to make sure that you're as efficient as possible and you're making the most money as possible, but also providing the best service for your customers. You wanna to continue to maintain these basins year after year so that they stay in spec, and the best way to do that is with specialized equipment. So we are done now, and this took about 20 minutes, which obviously not much time at all with a, a capable piece of equipment like the Ventrac. Um, you can see what you've got left here, cattails, uh, some native grasses that you'll just let there. Uh, there's really no risk of any damage being done there because no trees or anything are gonna grow in there. What we didn't see before we started actually made this a much more difficult uh, job than, than I would have expected. So the one inlet, the furthest over that direction, it starts at the very top of the fence and it tapers down to a very steep kind of ditch and it's lined with rock. All of the other inlets are a little easier to get around, but basically what you have to do is just cautiously approach those and work your way from outside in uh, to make sure you don't run into them, over them, around them, crush anything. Uh, but oftentimes you'll, you'll find exactly what we did here, a lot of rock, uh, things sort of lining the, the path of water into the basin. And you have to be aware of that, make sure you don't hit the rock and displace it, and also make sure you don't do any damage to the equipment. And this is basically done now. I would probably run a, tr a string trimmer around the outside perimeter real quick just to clean up some of the edge lines. And uh, the stuff in the bottom can stay. It's never going to get any taller or, or different than that. It's going to stay on those cattails and uh, come back and do this again in another year or two. Okay, so when you're on the internet and you have a big following like we do, you get to take the opportunity to sometimes rant for a little bit. And I think I'm just gonna do this every time I find the stuff because it annoys me. So I know in the past I have made mention of the fact that you shouldn't throw garbage out your window driving down the road in your vehicle or wherever you happen to be. Don't, don't throw trash away. Just find a waste can, preferably recycle it, whatever. Just don't throw it anywhere because when you do throw it somewhere, you know where it ends up? In a retention basin. There is so much garbage in here. <laughs> like, no joke, we would spend as much time picking up trash in here as we would actually maintaining the area. It's just not cool. Don't do it.